Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about dealing with depression and down days on your weight loss journey. And I would like to, first of all, make the disclaimer, I am not a therapist, I'm not a doctor, um, and I would encourage you, if you feel like you are depressed, um, seek help. Seek either a doctor's help, a, a, a psychiatrist's help, a psychologist's help. Um, you are worth it. What you know, what, Whatever you're going through right now, uh, take the effort and time to to do what is ever necessary to get yourself to a good place. Um, I wanted to talk about this because I, I I don't feel that I've ever really struggled with clinical depression, but I have had you know kind of I've been in funks before, and uh, most recently uh, I think I've been struggling with a little bit of PMDD, which stands for premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and and basically. It's kind of like a, a, a small kind of depression uh, right before your period. So, um, so I just wanted to talk about you know how I've dealt with this and and kind of what has helped me uh, along the way uh, because I think this is something a lot of us deal with and not a lot of people talk about because a lot of times we want to you know just focus on the good and I think it is good to focus on the good but also I I, I feel like I should also talk about the difficult things too. Back in 2014, that, that was when I had my, I've had enough moment. You know, I had those uh, pictures on Facebook. I was, I was upset about those um, that I've been tagged in. And, you know, while I was crying, I, I ha- the, the thought ran through my head and it was a fleeting thought, but it was basically something akin to um, maybe it would have just been better, you know, the world would be better off without me or something like that. And that thought, that one thought, um, scared me because I was a mom to three kids and I was a, a wife and uh, I, 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 I've never been suicidal, um, but I, I did realize in that moment I was heading down a bad path that, you know, I, I had negative self-talk, which I didn't even really realize at the time. Um, and I think we all kind of have self-talk issues. Most of us, I think, uh, I used to think I was alone in this, but the more I've, I've, uh, listened to other people talk about it, I realized that the, this negative inner dialogue is a thing that runs through a lot of people's heads. So you're not alone. If, if you have this, you know, this conversation in your head all the time where it just seems like you're constantly being really harsh and critical with yourself, that, you're not alone. And, um, so in, in 2014, after I had that moment, you know, I, d- I did, um, kind of have a come to Jesus moment, uh, and, and things did start to slowly get better after that, but I was in a funk and I didn't realize was, I was really in a funk until I started to come out of that funk. Um, but you know, in, in 2014, I slept a lot, you know, I was, I would wake up, you know, um, really late in, in the morning and still feel tired and just kind of the whole day just was kind of blah, you know, um, I, I worked a lot and I didn't really like the thing that I was doing as far as my job was concerned. And it just, you know, I, I, I loved my family, but there was, you know, there was just, I was just in a funk. I I don't know a better word to describe it, but I determined that I wanted to get into a better mood. I decided like, I've got to, I've got to get in a good mood. I think I even Googled, like, how do you get, (laughs) how do you get in a good mood? And, um, one thing that I read about was the power of a playlist. And so that was one of the things I did. I made myself a playlist on Spotify of all the songs that made me feel happy, that made me feel good. Even when I felt bad, I thought I've got to, I've got to come up with a way to just something I can do to get myself in a better mood. So that's what I did. I, I named the playlist Get Happy because literally that's what I was trying to do. And um, and I put the most embarrassing songs, anything that would get me, uh, you know, smiling, kind of laughing, or just that would made me want to dance around. 
And you would not believe uh, how much that helped just in my day-to-day life, just to be able to pop that song on uh, or that playlist on. And, and, you know, a lot of times I would get in the shower. And that was another thing. I started taking care of myself, uh, taking daily showers, getting myself outside, doing something, you know, going for walks, going for runs occasionally, um, just doing anything I could to get myself in a good mood. And, you know, this for a very long time, I felt like worked as far as like I, you know, in in 2015, that's when I joined the gym. I was going to the gym all the time, every day, um, and I felt really good. And I think probably the thing that stands out in my mind that year where I, I didn't do so good is once I injured my back, that kind of broke my stride and... Uh, I started to, I didn't have that thing that, that was giving me, I guess that endorphin rush, you know, that like I was lifting really heavy weights and then suddenly I didn't have that and the weight started to come back on. And so that was kind of like, kind of getting into a bad place there. And, you know, luckily I started walking and I, and I, I let that become my goal, um, was to just have a step goal. And I got out there and I started walking consistently and that helped to keep my mood elevated. Um, and you know, so that was the first thing that was just how I kind of got myself out of the funk was to just start moving and start, and start, you know, putting myself, you know, making it a priority to get myself into a good mood, whatever that took. It also helped that I was losing weight. So that was, you know, this, you know, positive cycle of, you know, I was more active and I was, you know, getting my weight in a good place. And then as I was getting my weight in a good place, it just made my mood better. And it was just a really virtuous cycle. But I would say in in about the past year, I have noticed um, these symptoms and and I've uh, found that it's definitely hormonal. It seems to occur um, about a week before my period. Sometimes it's about 10 days, but usually it's about a week. Sometimes it's three days. And and this is the tricky thing about what I've been experiencing. It hasn't been consistent, meaning some months. I'm fine. Other months, it's really rough. And, um, but I, I can definitely see that it's hormonal because when I get my period, uh, it always straightens itself out like immediately. And, um, from everything I've researched, it's PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And I have found that this is very different from what I would call a funk. And, um, and that's why I wanted to talk about it because I feel like it's probably the closest thing I've ever experienced to depression. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people out there are probably dealing with similar things. And I just kind of want to share my experiences in the hope that um, if you've ever experienced something like this or if you are currently experiencing something like this, you'll know that you're not alone. And, um, and I can kind of maybe just share what's helping me uh, so that maybe it can help you or and I would again, encourage you to talk with your doctor about this um, and and do whatever you need to do in order to get yourself into a good place. So um, what I've found is I cannot snap myself out of this thing that happens. Um, like when it's going on, I just can't snap myself out. Like I know, I know, like logically I know <laughs> what's going on and I, and I know that I am, you know, I'm, I'm feeling really down, but I just can't seem to get myself, uh, you know, like out of it. And that is a big difference in how I've seen this manifest versus, you know, just when you're kind of in a funk and you're just kind of feeling down. And, you know, I've noticed like when this is happening, I feel like I'm failing even, even when there's plenty of evidence to the contrary. So even though logically things look a certain way, it feels very, very different. And that has been the one thing actually that has helped dur- during all of this is to recognize that I'm going through something and, and just to just to notice this pattern and just know, you know, just to know that it's happening. Because the first couple of times that it happened, man, I w- it, it threw me for a loop because I felt like, what's going on? It felt like the way the best way I can put it is you start to question like, am I just now seeing reality for what it is, or is it that I am uh just in a in a bad mood you know so in other words like you you can kind of in this funk feel like, oh, I'm just being stupid all the other times where I'm really optimistic for the rest of the month like this is reality um but 
now that I've been able to, in hindsight, see, you know, you know, how I feel during that time versus how I feel once my period starts and then I'm, you know, back to normal, noticing those patterns has been really helpful because it helps me to just know when I'm going through that, like, basically I've learned to just ignore (laughs) my, my, uh, my feelings during that time, because I just, I, I recognize now it's just a hormonal thing and this will pass. Um, but you know, I just have to go through it and, and it has helped to learn how to talk it through. My husband has been great during this time. I just tell him like, oh, this is what's going through my head right now. And he's really good about saying, you know, well, you know, here's what's actually, you know, happening or, or whatever. And, and he's been great. So I would encourage you, if you're, if you're experiencing something similar to this, reach out to people you love, you know, who, whoever that is for you, uh, your husband, um, you know, uh, your best friend, anybody that you feel like you can really talk to. And of course, I have that tendency, as most of you know, to really research things. And so far, all the things I've researched uh, for PMDD, it seems like it's still being studied. Like people aren't really sure exactly, you know, the best ways to treat it. But I would encourage you, if this is something that's going on, talk to your doctor, talk to your therapist, whoever uh, you need to talk to and and, uh, get yourself uh, on a good track. Like I mentioned before, I have never been suicidal. However, I know some people do struggle with that. And, um, and, and, and this can happen, by the way, with PMDD. Uh, if you have a very uh, severe bout of it, you can get suicidal. So um, again, I am not a doctor or a therapist, and I would encourage you to reach out uh, if that is happening to you. And if you happen to be someone who has struggled with being suicidal, um, when, one article that um, I, I've, I've, I've read um, to try to understand that better um, and that I think has really helped a lot of people is uh, one called Practical Thoughts on Suicide by Tim Ferriss. Um, Tim Ferriss is a guy who, um, if, if you don't know who that is, he wrote the four hour work week and, um, and, and he's, I, I love his podcast, but he uh, was suicidal at one point. And, um, and so he wrote an article from his perspective about how he, uh, learned how to think about suicide and, and just some practical thoughts on it. So I would offer that to you if, if that is something you're struggling with, but ultimately please reach out and, and get help if, uh, if you are struggling, uh, with depression. And, you know, I am a Christian and I do believe God has put us all on this earth for a purpose, for a reason. He doesn't do things by accident. Um, And I I would just encourage you, like, even if you're a Christian, look, and I get this, that there's a stigma around depression. I I have in the past felt bad. Like if I'm feeling down, I feel like, well, that means I'm less of a Christian or something. But I would encourage you, there are sometimes hormonal things, uh, chemical things in your brain uh, that can make uh, these things happen. So make yourself a priority and, and get yourself the help that you need, uh, whatever that looks like for you. And I'll uh, link to Tim Ferriss's article uh, in the show notes. And also, uh, there is a number for the suicide prevention hotline. In case, you know, you, you just need to talk to someone, you can call that number and, and reach out that way. Thank you for joining me in this episode, and I will see you in the next one. Today's episode was brought to you by my book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, How I Lost Over 80 Pounds and Kept It Off Eating Whatever I Wanted. To get your copy, simply follow the link in the show notes.